If you like this video, make sure to visit our Vimeo page and follow us to get the latest update. In our offices, we used to get this dump very often. And uh, I believe if I remember well, uh, probably there is some memory parameters they need to increase or change with which this issue gets usually resolved. Mm -hmm. it's, basically, uh, it's basically taking the LIS uh, extractor, uh, the function module, the standard one, and it is uh, looping at CT data from, you know, to LS data. So CT data is the one, uh, the standard table from which, you know, we get the data. Yeah, that's uh, the internal so, table. Yes, yes, that's the internal table where the data gets stored. And, and see it's selecting from KNA1 customer master. And there are some fields where it is giving some condition mm -hmm. into this condition and and select. Okay. Yeah. So basically, it's a standard extractor uh, program, the Elias one. MC double level. So this is basically we are getting for all uh, extractors, right? We are checked. All, all, uh, all. So the all, extractor all checker itself is not Yes, the uh, for FI also we checked, right? It was getting. I just don't get it. Why it's providing the error? <clears throat> See, still, what happened is, I believe the previous the previous message, um, the previous issue is still resides. So even though we change the extractor. Still read the same exactly. internal table. I am actually not, you know, uh, getting to understand that how this is basically redirecting to the LIS extractor code. It should not be re redirecting it, right? Since we are uh, executing the FI extractors, the program or the function module should be different. Sorry. Uh... We will solve, we will figure it out uh, this one. Yeah. No. So let us, I think today, um, today we will try to do BW query and then uh, tomorrow we will try to do uh, native HANA stuff. Okay. That is the agenda for this week. And uh, if it gets resolved by tomorrow, then uh, we'll do day after tomorrow, the uh, continuation of the extraction. Okay? okay. So, but let us, let us start with the uh, BW query. So. I um, I would like to share uh, that stuff with you now. I'm again into uh, BW repository in the project explorer. So uh, just to give you a bit of, again, uh, a bit more insight to HANA Studio as you haven't started practicing it. Sometimes uh, these screens look a bit confusing and uh, you know um, non-user friendly. Uh, so what happens is uh, by default, we have uh, three tabs. By now you might have already observed that we have Project Explorer, Outline, and Info Provider, okay? These are the three tabs. The objects which we want to use in the BW system, they are there in the Project Explorer tab, okay? All our objects. And within the Project Explorer, we have noticed that there are two systems. One is BW for HANA system, B4H, and S4H, okay? I'm showing you the navigation just to uh, you know give you a bit of uh, comfort when you actually start using the system. 
if you have any doubts, uh, this is the right time to ask. Okay. So once you have the project explorer, you access the DW4 uh, HANA system, double click there, it will prompt for user ID and password. As I've already entered it, it will not prompt me for user ID and password. But if you have uh, not entered any login credentials, then for the first time, you need to uh, enter the details. Okay, is now it, within it, BW. Sorry, Ann, is it the best and the welcome one, two, three? Yes, best and welcome one, two, three are the uh, user ID and passwords, but I'm not sure uh, okay. if I remember uh, correctly, uh, he is giving every, every user a different user ID this time and a different password. Yeah. This is what yeah. we got it. So not like the previous batch. In my previous batch, we received, everyone received the same user ID and password. But in this batch, I believe he has changed the strategy and giving uh, each user a different ID and password. So I'm not sure what you will get it. But if you get best and welcome, if you want to use best and welcome one, two, three, or more than welcome uh, to use the same credentials. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, just one thing. Uh, uh, James, uh, you got your ID password, you got your credentials. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. I have my username and the, and the, and the password, um, but I haven't actually tried because uh, my Apple ID, my Apple account, there was a little problem with it. So initially I thought it was from the, um, what do you call it, from the, the vendor, but I realized it wasn't from the vendor, it was from um, me. So I'm going to resolve it probably and get in there and, and see if uh, it works. Do you want me to try now, James? If you want, we can try now and I mean, check whether your credentials are working. Uh, yeah, why not? I can give you the, uh, uh, what is called, the username of the part, just one second. Okay, let me, let me try through the GUI first. That will I be have easy. it here, whenever you are ready, um, I can give it to you. Okay, give me first uh, the BW system credentials. So it's BW for HANA 1. That's, that's the, um, the RDP username. BW uh, for HANA what, 1. What is, uh, okay, you want me to check through the RDP as well? Okay, let me check through the RDP as well then. We'll start from scratch. Yeah. That's, so that that's you get the confidence. Okay, he is using the same here. Uh, best and welcome, one, two, three, same. Also, is the same. Same user, yes. We are using the same user ID, mine only. So we, we use the same when it is working. Best and uh, welcome, one, two, three. Oh, okay. So this is only to get into the R R R D P. And then when uh, that is here, only for to get into the R D P. Once once okay. you are in the R D P, what you need to do is there are two there are two interfaces through which we access the system. One is SAP logon. So with the SAP logon, we log into the SAP uh, GUI, which is graphical user interface. And in this, we have two systems: S four Hana and BW four Hana. Okay, so. BW4 HANA is here and S4 HANA is here. For both of them, the password and user ID are same. And there is another area where you need to log in is your uh, HANA Studio. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, naturally, you know, I got uh, confused as well. So the user ID password for say, SAP is same and it's just that uh, they have uh, provided the RDP uh, different. So that's understandable. The RDP login password is different. So the SAP yeah. passwords are same, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, common sense. It's, yeah, it's right. Mm -hmm. The same, Correct. Uh, the RDP. Yeah, yeah, I also got confused. And then I checked, I also found that they have only provided the RDP, uh, yes, RDP credentials. 
not the SAP systems that you choose. BW for HANA or ECC for HANA. ECC is the same. Okay. So uh, the account which you are logging in, we would be logging in with that same account, right? In the SAP or ECC system, right? Sorry. BW yes, user ID is same, best 20. Right? Yes, yes, same account. Okay. Now you can see here, see here, BFH means we are in the BW system. Okay. You can see the BW related T codes here, like RSA1. So this is your VW system. Now, likewise, we can also check uh, S4 HANA as well. So I'm able to access both VW and S4 HANA. Okay. The same error. Okay. So uh, the other thing we we have to check, uh, James, is this one. Most important is our uh, Hana Studio. Okay. Do you see here HANA Studio? Yeah, I've seen it over there, but <clears throat> as I said, I have to um, do yes. one of these things on my my, uh, my laptop first before I can do all these things. So, um, yeah, if I should get it correctly, once you access uh, the remote desktop, and then you, you are going to see the studio on there, just like I'm seeing on, on, on yours right now. So your voice is cutting off. What do you see once you access it? The, the RDP, once you're able to get inside, it's going to take you to... to yeah, once you get into RDP, you will see the same, same options, like what you are seeing on this screen. So oh. this RDP is your access. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. I don't need to enter this again. This is for the first time when you do it, you use this one, but I don't, I don't think it was needed for you to have this. It, it, should, it should pick it up by default, everything. You did not need to do that. Uh, I don't know what's the reason behind it, that you need to create your own workspace. So now you're able to see the VW for HANA system. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is, I have added a new system uh, into your uh, machine if in your workspace, if it was not there. So for instance, if you, if you go to a new client wherein you need to do that, 
from scratch. Then you say new project. And then we will add S4 HANA system as well. Do you see here S4 HANA system? Okay, it's in the bad perspective. Okay, and uh, this is VW system. So basically what happens is in HANA studio, there are multiple perspectives. We usually uh, switch between three different perspectives. One is ABAP, one is BW, and the other one is uh, actual database of HANA, which is called as HANA perspective that is here. Okay, so when we say open perspective, okay, we don't have to do all these things. You can open from here as well. This is HANA, BW and ABAP. So three different perspectives we usually work on. So in our next class, when we uh, learn about creating calculation views, we will go to HANA database. We will work directly in the HANA perspective. So here I will say add system. And we need to enter our HANA DB systems. So the credentials for HANA systems are mentioned here in the password file. If you see here, uh, he has given us, uh, yeah. So these are the credentials we need to furnish if you want to work in the HANA database. Rohit, are you following me or is it too much confusing? What is it? No, no, no. I'm following you. As you said, yes, it's right there actually. Okay. Uh, for the CDS views creation, we will go to a BAP uh, perspective in S4 HANA. And uh, for calculation views, we will okay. open the HANA perspective. Yes. And for BW yes. modeling, we will go into the BW modeling perspective. Yes. So our login credentials here in the HANA database is W capital W is capital caps. Welcome one two three. Welcome at the In the in the BW and uh, other system, it is all small. Now uh, there is one challenge we will have now. If someone does repeated uh, more than three times or three times, enter wrong password. Because we all are sharing the same user ID, uh, the user credentials would be locked. The user ID would be locked till this guy again, you know, resets it. So just be very mindful. Don't enter wrong password. Uh, if, if you enter it once or twice, then stop it. Do not enter it again because the others in the team will get impacted. Do not log the user IDs, okay? So now we are in a different perspective. This is your HANA database. So HANA database, BW modeling, and ABAP perspective. So these are the three different perspectives we work on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. once you are in these uh, navigations or um, tabs that you are, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, switching in between on there, right? I don't know. Today I'm having a bit of problem. Is it me or others? I don't know uh, 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 to hear you, uh, James. Oh, you mean, can you hear me? Your voice is, your voice is breaking, cutting off for me. I, I can't hear your voice clearly. Yeah, I, I can hear you it clearly, is, is... but I don't know. Yeah, I think I 
tend to experience that with you at 30 probably is it's a technical glitch because i can hear you play at my end okay 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 fine okay fine fair enough okay so we will we will log into the bw system let's start with our exercise now so now that i have uh, done this setting in your system it 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 will remain as it is unless someone goes and delete this workspace or edit this workspace so whatever you see here it would still uh, uh, you know remain as it is in your machine uh, james okay, okay. Uh, Um, so if uh, I end up getting access, would will will I have to also like get? No, you shouldn't. Uh, no, it it by default it has to be there. Uh, right. So you should not have to do all this exercise. What I am doing now. Uh, hopefully, it, it it should work. But in case if there is anything, uh, you can ask the basis guy or the. Third party vendor to support you. If not, then uh, in the class, I will help you out. Okay. Okay. So now we have got different one this is a web perspective do you see a different uh, icon can you see a noticeable difference between these two icons yeah one is blue on top one is uh, yeah. yellow on top do you see that mm -hmm. yeah and what is for the bw it is yellow on top so, which means that the one with the yellow on top, both are BW perspective objects. Okay. So, this S4 HANA is having um, what I did is I have added another uh, variant of S4 HANA perspective, uh, sorry, project in the system. Reason being that this would help us to do BW related activities. So, this is in BW perspective. Now, if you want to create CDS views, as you said, uh, Rohit, we need to have a BAP perspective of S4 HANA in our system, and we need to go to a BAP perspective here. So it's it's slightly confusing. I will just uh, quickly share the screen here itself and, and write it down here so that uh, you understand what is happening. As I said, within HANA Studio, Can you, can you read this notepad? Is it visible? Hello? Hello, folks. Yeah, yeah. Am I out? Is, yes. is my screen visible? Yes, yes. I can see the notepad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we have three different perspectives. Basically, we spend a lot of time in BW perspective. What does BW perspective do means it will allow us to work on BW related, you know, task. There are uh, functions related to BW which are available in BW perspective. Okay, we have been working a lot till now in BW perspective only. We haven't seen much about ABAP perspective or uh, HANA admin perspective. So the second one is ABAP perspective. This is used when you want to create CDS views, core data services views, okay. embedded analytics. For that, we use this CDS views and
embedded analytics, okay? The third one is we have what HANA admin, okay? This is native HANA administration console. What does it do? It allow you to directly, it allows you to directly, you know, um, interact with the HANA database. So you can directly interact with HANA DB in HANA admin console. What do you do at a database level? At a database level, you can create tables. Okay. You can create schemas. You can create views. So the there is a native HANA view, which is also called as calculation views. These views are nothing but the calculation views. We will create in the HANA console. So being a member of BW team, you might need to switch between these three different perspectives to perform different activities, okay? Ideally speaking, uh, SAP should have uh, made a very simplified way to interact with these three different types of uh, activities to be performed in a single window, but anyways, this is uh, the way it was designed. The tool was designed and we have to switch between one tool to another tool to perform the task related to each perspective. So you can notice that if you are in BW system, you see like this. And here also it is related to BW, BW repository and data sources in S4HANA. Now, if you click here, you don't see anything here because right now we are in what? We are currently in, uh, ABAP perspective. It is it is switched to ABAP by default. See here. If, if you notice, if I click on the above one, it will switch to the next one by default. Okay, strange. So it doesn't switch directly from ABAP to BW, but from BW to ABAP, it does switches automatically. So right now we are in the BW system. And if I click on this one, ABAP one. It is switching to above. See, here. it will switch from here to above. What's going on? So these are above related objects in the system. It's too much confusion. I don't want to get into that now. And there is again the HANA did admin console. So here we have four of this catalog content provisioning and security. Okay. I think ours is BIC system. Our this is our uh, schema HANA BW, and then there are some tables here in the database in the BW system in, under this schema. So this is not application specific. Now we are directly reading the database contents. Yeah, I think these are the tables in the database. some of the database tables available in the system, okay? Anyways, 
let's let's switch back to our bw schema and go to the bw system uh, the topic which i want to cover today is related to reports okay i don't know whether i have uh, uh, enough content to show you on the bex queries or not but let me see um, So this today's topic, which we are covering, is actually not part of the official curriculum of Zanantek. This is something which I want to, uh, you know, teach you because it is the one of the uh, key primary tasks which BW folks does. Maybe Rohit can throw a lot of light on this. He is currently working in BW, so he would definitely acknowledge that the key task we do as a BW folks are categorized into three areas, extraction, modeling, and reporting. So if you have to generate reports, if you have to create reports, obviously you need to then uh, work on BW queries. And that is what we are touching now in uh, today's session. Probably for uh, Rohit, this might not be interesting much, of of his much interest to him but anyways no it's not like that <laughs> uh, since you are uh, giving uh, your views or uh, sharing your knowledge it's always uh, a part that i would be always in you know of interest so obviously i will always be interesting about this i will always feel interesting about this and because you know uh, i have done i have done things but you not compared to the things which you have done, right? You have been in this particular uh, uh, area, you know, for so long. So obviously, mm, there are so many things, uh, you know, wherein I had hadn't touched. So obviously, I will be, you know, gaining uh, experience I, from your side. This is, uh, I personally feel that it's more like, um... Uh, what do you say? It's, it's more like learning while teaching. So the way I take it as I am learning a lot mm -hmm. while giving sessions, this is the way I take it. It's not just I'm uh, sharing my knowledge, but also personally, I always feel that with every batch, I learn something new and uh, I believe that I it is helping me out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think this is the way. If you have to, definitely, uh, if you want to, um, uh, you know, improve your uh, technical skills and enhance uh, clarity on any particular topic. The best way, personally, I feel is to teach someone, share that knowledge with someone. And, exactly. and, and not only the, uh, the person who is listening to you, his thoughts would be clear, but even your thoughts would be more clearer than his. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just trying to figure out whether I have some uh, content for this, but uh, I don't see. Um, probably I will I will share something uh, later um, with you all. There there is some material which I will upload into the uh, into our site as well in our LMS. Okay. I could not uh, figure out a proper Bex query document to share with you right now. But anyways, we will start with the, rather than spending much time on the theoretical part, we will start uh, with, uh, with the life uh, in the system itself. Okay. So what I will do is, um, let me hand over to you Rohit uh, screen. And, and, and uh, I want you to navigate. Uh, do you get an access to, Take control. Hmm. Uh, no, not yet. I will give control to you, Rohit. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Just for your information that uh, you know, I haven't uh, used this new uh, Bex query. No, no, I will. I will tell you. I will tell you. It is same Bex. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. It is nothing new. It is Bex only because yeah. you wanted to learn last class. You asked me how yes, to yes, do exactly. that. I want. Exactly. I want you to uh, navigate so that you you remember it. Yeah, you will not forget it then. Yes. So yes. I have given you the control, Rohit. Uh, yeah. You uh, yeah. accept it, and I will. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you now over the on the screen what to do. Okay. 
basically james and ken what we are doing is we are looking into um, an analytical area of bw wherein we create the queries okay so it is called as uh, bw queries in the latest version of uh, the software bw for hana in the prior version it used to be a different software called as business explorer bex okay now that has been replaced with bw query the difference between bex and bw query is that to use bex you need to have uh, go to hana studio go to hana studio yeah so to use bex you need to have a separate add on installed on your machine same like uh, gui whereas uh, okay just uh, cancel sorry it's already there cancel 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 okay so just give me one second i will i'll open yeah. this for you yeah. It's already it's open. Yeah, I okay. can't see that one. Where is it open? If it is open, uh, it's something that we are missing. You have closed the previous one, the Anna Studio. No, I haven't. I haven't. I'll just hide this uh, floating meeting controls. And... Yeah, it is here now. Sorry yeah. about it. Yeah. Let it be from here. I will uh, take over. No? Yes. Okay. Let's go to the BW one and close this one. Okay. Start from here. Okay. So just before you start, uh, Rohit, um, mm. a brief overview for uh, both James and and is that we are using a new tool now, which is called as BW Query. Okay. What we did so far was we tried to uh, build a data model. Okay. Now the objective of BW tool is not to just build data and bring the data here. we also need to present the data okay and the presentation is done in a proper visualization tool now on top of bex we can use some other tool as well previously we used to have excel add in tool in bex called as bex analyzer that was the visualization tool we used to use a lot but now we don't use it anymore instead of bex analyzer what do we have do you know that uh, rohit which tool do we use these days instead uh, of bex analyzer for query designing Uh, no for query uh, excel for analysis correct so uh, analysis um, analysis, AO, for analysis for office excel we use it yeah. correct so we use ao for excel um, for accessing the queries and apart from that we have these days uh, lots of other uh, add on tools like we can then expose them to business object suite we can expose them to sap analytics cloud or uh, i have seen i have been uh, working my current project on power bi as well uh, comparatively uh, i see i have in the past project i have worked on sap analytics cloud now i am working on sap uh, instead of uh, sap analytics cloud i am working on power bi in my current project and i have noticed that uh, the features are far better and easier in power bi compared to sac so so there is a trend that the the, the clients are moving for visualization to uh, they prefer power bi and and there is a reason i i personally have noticed that it is much simpler and faster and performance wise better much better too that's my personal so, opinion power bi from microsoft and also cheaper as correct well. power bi from microsoft as a visualization tool so instead of uh, business object suites we have been using business objects webby and crystal reports and mm. lumira they are crap mm. in, in 
in front of uh, power bi they are really crap they they, they, they are okay. no match so visualization if you are considering you should, you visualization should try using then, uh, excel doesn't uh, so the analysis for excel doesn't fit in it, into it right if we are considering visualization it, yeah it, it is not that strong as uh, the other tools in the market right instead of analysis for office for excel we have sap product uh, sap analytics cloud so okay yeah. i am talking about a lot of things uh, might be confusing to uh, these folks uh, what uh, let us do step by step one by one uh, okay as part of our bw we need to extract the data okay from any source system which we did it so we have extracted from flat file we extracted data from sap uh, r3 uh, s4 hana okay so we extracted the data from flat file excel and loaded into b so the, the 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 job of data loading requires the data models to be built in the system so as part of the data modeling activities what we did was we created ads source open ods views composite provider so all those objects we created so those are part of what modeling activity okay modeling in bw so we did the data models creation in system now the third key task we do as a bw developer is we uh, create the reports but we don't generally create reports directly we create first something called as queries and those queries then are consumed by any of the visualization tool or reporting tool so we create queries in the system which is a subset of report or these are like base source to create the actual reports so to create a query in the bdm for hana system we have a tool called as bw query tool okay now this is embedded as part of shit what's going on are you okay please don't change the screen uh, just give me a minute excellent it happened so okay no 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 worries no worries so we have a tool called as a bw query tool we use this tool to create uh, queries on top of the data set we have created okay so rohit is going to show you how to create a very simple uh, bw query in the system and and once we create these queries these queries can be consumed by any of the visualization tools or reporting tools these are the like uh, better reporting tools okay what are the tools we have in the market these days we have uh, sap business objects this is most widely used but apart from business objects sap itself is trying to promote its another product sap analytics cloud heavily it is trying to promote this product and uh, now in 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 this space in the visualization space there is a lot of competition in the market there are three other uh, market leaders here uh, tableau is a very powerful tool i haven't used much i i have seen maybe a little bit of demo and this but personally i haven't used much tableau so i can't comment but i i heard it's very very powerful it's a market leader in terms of visualization then the second powerful tool is power bi it's by microsoft uh currently i'm using it and uh, personally i started liking it a lot the th third one is uh, click sense but but not only this there are uh, other tools as well in the market which are very popular these days so there's a lot of competition going on in the visualization space so sap has to uh, you know bring its products up to uh, up to speed to catch up with the features which are available in the other tools in the market uh, what Ian, we will uh, learn just sorry? one question uh, what is uh, uh, what tools are included in sap bo 
business object you, have, you haven't used in the bio like webby is there lumira is there uh, i know webby uh, but uh, lumira is also the sap tool yeah it's the sap tool no lumira lumira has got more two products one is called as lumira designer and lumira uh, okay dashboard okay yeah. no i haven't used it uh, i was under the impression that uh, lumira is uh, some uh, no third party or not not from sap okay can you just give me one second please sorry folks i'm back hello yes yes yep so uh, what we will do is now we use the um query tool to create queries so basically it is nothing but a visualization tool to see the contents of the data available in the bw system so we extracted the data from source system the source system could be anything then we brought the data and loaded into this is bw system now our data is available in the bw system but it is of no use if it is not presented to the customer if if our customer or clients wants to view the data then we need to create something called as queries in the system okay and to create the queries we are going to learn now how to create the queries in the system okay so you need to log into the system here bw repository log into this and where is our james info area okay it is under this one z i s on tech 2 and we have a james info area within the james info area take any of our info provider on any of the info provider you can create the queries typically the best practice is to create queries on the composite providers so let us see any of the composite provider has got any data or not okay if we have any data on any composite provider then uh, we will use that composite provider to um, to create query of it looks like there is a data here i have uh, selected a composite provider right click and what i did was query preview i express okay if i expand this i can see the contents here it is similar to this screen only the query query designer tool so i just brought something here and you can see that there is some sort of data which is available in the composite provider so let us use this composite provider to create a query on top of it okay so this is also called as info provider the data provider which feeds data to a reporting tool is also called as info provider because it provides the information to the end user too much uh, to absorb or are you guys able to follow me both uh, james and ken so far is it clear before we actually start with the query creation is my explanation clear am i audible uh, rohit hello 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 yes uh... i don't know why but the sound is very bad hello Hello. Sorry, but I'm having issues with the sound. I can't hear you very well. How? See, um, I was sharing here this presentation, this uh, notepad. What I was saying that we perform mainly three different tasks. extract data 
create data models and create queries. Okay. Once you do the extraction from source system, it could be SAP, Excel, whatever system you choose, you extract and try to bring the data into BW system. So when you have to bring the data into the BW system, you need to you need to you know create some objects in the BW system. The objects to hold the data in the BW system are uh, there are only four objects in the in the new version of BW: info objects, ADSO, open ODS views, and composite providers. We have learned how to create them. Okay, once we created the uh, objects, we on top of those objects, we need to load the data. We loaded the data using the data transfer process, DTP. Once we loaded the data, the data is available in the database and the BW system, but it is not available for end user to see in the form of a report. To see the data in the form of the report, we have to first create a query. And to create a query, we are seeing the session. Now this session is helping you out to, to teach you how to create very simple queries in BW. There are lots of features which you can explore at a later stage, but at least I am planning to teach you something which would give you a bit of confidence to uh, kickstart. And later you can learn on your own a uh, bit of your advanced features as well related to, related to BW queries, okay? Now, once BW queries are created, these queries can further be consumed by uh, proper visualization tools. Previously, we didn't have these kind of tools like Previously, in the since 10 years ago or eight years ago, we only used to use Excel as an add-in and, and so use a tool for us. I don't mean to cut you. So Rohit just uh, sent me a message saying that he has a power outage in his area. So he can use the internet. So that's why oh. he's offline. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem, no problem. That is fine, thank you. Thanks for updating me. So, uh, the the message which i was trying to give you was that um, as part of our role in the bw space we have to also create queries okay and how do we create queries to create a queries we need to identify an info provider an info provider could be any of the four objects which i have mentioned it could be composite provider uh, adso open ods view or info object but it is always the best practice to create queries on the composite provider. We, we typically use composite provider to create reports and queries on top of it. Reason being that if you want to make an enhancement to a composite provider, assume that you want to add another info cube or another ADSO into it, you can join it easily if it is in a composite provider. You don't have to change the structure. Now I'll tell you one thing. Imagine you have one table, you have created a query on table A. Now there is some more data in table B, which you want in the same, in the same report. You can't bring it because the source of the report is different, table B. What you need to do is you need to then create a table C or view, which would capture the data from A and B, which means you need to then recreate the query from scratch. The query which you created on table A cannot be used for uh, accessing the data from view C. A lot of things. So in short, if we have a composite product, you can whack in any number of objects into it. Say you have one table, one ADS, so tomorrow you want to add another, another ADS. So if there is a logical relationship, you can add another object, another object, as many objects as you like within a composite provider. And you don't have to redefine the query structure again. You can use the same query structure uh, if you are using composite order. That's that's the benefit. You will you will appreciate and understand all these things when you start actually start creating it, start practicing it. There are lots of uh, theoretical things to chew in, which which would be very difficult to remember and retain, unless and until you start practicing it and look uh, for results by yourself. You will not gain that sort of confidence. Now it is very important for you to request for access immediately and start practicing as soon as possible. Reason being that if you delay it, maybe next two, three weeks, we will close the batch and then you will lose the interest. You will not have that uh, confidence to practice it. I would strongly uh, suggest you to uh, pay attention and try to spend time and start practicing, at least practice what we learned so far. 
and if you have any doubts you can ask me in the class okay what what we are doing now is we have validated whether this particular info cube uh, sorry our uh, what was the object our composite provider has got any data or not so we have seen that this particular composite provider zcp underscore cust5 has got some sort of data and how do we check how did we check we check by clicking on the data preview right click and we looked at data preview and you can see that there is some data here okay if you want you can enhance here sorry expand here and do it or you can make it a full screen and do it it's up to you whatever you want where you want you can do it okay so we can see that yes there is some data here in the system okay what else do we need to do now we need to start actually creating the queries how do we create a query in the bw system select that select the info provider the object on which we want to create query is also called as an info provider as well okay though it's a virtual provider it's a virtual info provider but okay so this particular composite provider i want to create a query on top of it i select the composite provider i say right click and what do i do new and what do i have to do query i am going to create a new query on top of this composite provider now you give any technical name of the query personally i have a habit of uh, giving the uh, query name as zqry with this i understand that okay it's a query object and uh, say this is cust5 say customer5 query customer number five query, something like that okay this is uh, the info provider name and this is the query name and click on finish are you guys following me yeah okay yeah now the whole objective is once we have this query we want to pass it on this query to the end user okay that end user will see the results by himself okay that's the whole objective because the data which is there in the ads so and stuff is too technical they can't the business user or the end users can't uh, you know uh, translate that information and they can't uh, use it it's not user friendly so we have a top up visualization tool called as bw query which will allow you to generate a query on top of the data set which we already have the data set which i have chosen now is um, zcp underscore cust5 this is my composite provider and as i am creating a query on top of it it is also called as an info provider so on this particular info provider uh, i have selected it right click and said new and query once i select new query this screen will pop up okay now this is the query designer screen okay the bottom part is useless don't worry about the bottom part it is just the properties and stuff okay i don't want you to get confused with this uh, lower part but just look into this screen if i want to see this screen i'll just expand it okay so that i don't want you to get uh, confused with any other screens i have expanded this screen this is what you will see as part of query designer screen okay let us focus on a uh, few of the key things which we need to understand okay the first it it, it comes with multiple tabs there are like seven eight tabs here in this particular um, tool so it used to be a separate add on tool in the previous version of bw now what sap did it just cleverly embedded the same tool into hana studio it used to be via a separate uh, gui now uh, not gui but uh, third party add on tool uh, we used to go start and we used to see that uh, okay there used to be object called as can you see here business explorer this is something okay and then query designer we used to use like this this previously uh, this was the uh, previous version of tool but the same thing what we see in the query designer sap just embedded into this one okay i don't want to open that query designer now but 
uh, whatever we used to have in the query designer, we we have it now in the V double for HANA system. Okay. So this is the this is the screen. As I said, this particular tool or the query designer part of uh, HANA Studio has got multiple tabs. So the first tab is general. It gives you general information to perform some generic activities. Okay. Um, we'll just move on to the we'll just move on to the next one. Filter tab. So if you want to filter the data, we use the filter tab. Again, I don't want to confuse you with so many options. For us, most important is the sheet definition. Here we define the query definition. Okay. Do you understand? So for the time being, yeah. just, you just focus only on the third tab. Forget about uh, general filter conditions, exceptions, dependencies, and runtime properties. You will learn about those at a later stage. But at the moment, I want you to concentrate only on one tab so that we learn at least the basics of creating the query. Okay. Now, if you want to query, create a query into the system, we need to have an info provider values or fields. Because we have uh, uh, you know, expanded it, we can't see any of the other screens now. Let me minimize it again. I've restarted it. Okay. What do I need to do now? I need to drag and drop the fields into this query designer tool. To drag and drop the fields, I will click on show info provider view. Can you see here? Oh, no, I can see the cursor. This yellow yeah. part. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you click on show info provider view, it would show me the contents of the info provider which I have used to create the query. What is my what is my info provider name? Can you tell me? Is it a is it a ADS or is it a composite provider? Which object have I used to create this query? What is my source for this particular query? What is my source object? Oh, is it, is it the ADSO? No, no, no. I have shown you just now, right? My source is a composite mm -hmm. provider. A composite yeah, provider for provider. test five. Okay. So yeah. my source is composite provider, and these are the fields of the composite provider. I want oh. to use it in the query. Okay. To keep it simple, let's start with something like this. Okay. I want to show only customer ID and product ID into the query. So all the characteristic objects we need to bring into the rows. The data which is of characteristic in nature should come into the rows. And the data which is of the numeric in nature should go into the columns. Okay, this is the thumb rule. I have created a very simple query. My query contains only four objects, two characteristic info objects and two key figure info objects. Typically, I put the characteristics into the row and key figure into the column. Once I do that, I save here. This query is not yet saved. We just created it, but it is still not yet saved. Okay, I save the query. Now the query has been saved. Okay, it says the object is still inactive, object state. Generate query. I click on the generate query button. Okay. Let us let us see the contents of the query. Now the object is version is active. Okay. Historical yeah. is not available. Yes. And which button did you push to activate the query? Is it, is it the, uh, the green one? The green one. Query? Yes. So first is you, you need to save the query and then click on generate the query. Okay. 
So there's no consistent. Okay. And now let us see the query content, the data of the query, data preview in the query. We have seen the preview of the data in the in the composite provider. Now I want to see the data of the query which we have created. Okay, here is a reporting preview. And you see at the bottom, okay. If you expand it, this is your full screen, and you see the query contents. Okay. The data is available like this customer ID product. Key figures are quantity and amount. Okay. Refresh it. Now there's another way. Uh, so this is this is the way we created the query. There's another way you can create the query, uh, sorry, view the query content. Is same, same stuff we see through the uh, BW4 cockpit. In the BW4 cockpit, if you want to see the data, it's a fury based application. We, ca we can see the content here as well. Okay, again, it is too much of, uh, small screen, I just expand it. Do you see the contents here? Yeah. Awesome, fantastic. So this was one of the very simplest way of doing the object creation in the in the query designer screen. Now in the query designer, we can do uh, plenty of task along with this, okay? Not only this, we can create uh, lots of things like filters, conditions, variables. Now I will show you something else, okay? One very minor, if you have followed so far, then I, will, uh, I would like to show you something else, few additional features, okay? I'll go back to, I have to minimize this. I will go back to the query designer screen. Uh, because I have maximized the screen, I have to restore it back. So the property screens would come here. If you want, you can close this here again. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, uh, I want to go back to the sheet definition. We just took only two fields. Now I want to take all the characteristic fields. Take all the characteristic fields, bring it here into the row. Okay, leave about customer ID and product. We have already taken those fields, but it should have been smart enough to take it because we already took the customer ID and product. And if you want to retake it, it doesn't allow me to take it. Okay, assume that we have six fields you want to you want to save it and then see the data preview reporting preview gives you the preview here on this screen if you go to uh, fury based application it's a different look and feel okay so you can see that we got all these fields here so by default whenever you execute the query you will get one, two, three, four, five, six key characteristics and two key figures. Okay, I'll restore it back. The same thing we can see it in BW4 cockpit. Basically, we, we have multiple options to perform a specific task. Okay. So now the look and feel is slightly uh, different to what we saw. Okay, can you see it? It's, it's, it's more uh, user-friendly and easy to read. So we can save as views, manage, and then you expand this you expand this, you have different options. We have seen the data in the tabular form. If you want to see the charts, you can create charts on the fly here. Change the chart type. 
instead of bar, you want to change the pie chart. Okay. If you want to see the layout, this is the field layout. Conditions, exceptions. Now I will show you something very interesting part. See, sometimes you're not interested in seeing all the fields. I have designed a query with so many fields, but you are not interested to see bank details, customer date of birth. You're not interested. It is not needed for you. You only need just the customer ID and customer name and, and those two, that's it. So I go to the uh, layout and take those out. You don't, whatever you don't need, take it and put it back to three dimensions. So for me, the area of interest for me is customer ID. Why do I not pick it up together? Okay. This is something very, uh, remove from layout. I don't want bank details. I want to remove it from the layout. Customer date of birth, remove from layout. So how I want the query to look like is customer ID should come first, second should come customer name, product, and then the key figures. So if I have to change the sequence, see, if you see the content now, now I have removed the fields, and now if I see the contents, can you see the change now? Customer ID, product, and customer name. Now, but but for me, the information would be more meaningful if my customer name appears beside customer ID. How do I do that? I click layout, say customer ID, and say move up. Are you guys following me? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So then click on data. Yeah. Now, if I want to see that, okay, a customer who has purchased uh, any item which is, uh, okay, so amount over 2000, I want to see only, only those items which value is more than 2000, okay, not the 500 and 2000 ones. Okay, I can put a condition as well on amount. Okay. I want to create a new condition. The condition is give the condition name, say this is my condition and it is on amount field, not on the quantity field. My amount should be, I would say if it is over greater than 2000, display only those values okay what should it display the condition should trigger and after this condition is triggered we should see that my values are filtered now i don't see all those fields which i used to put all those rows which are which were there previously okay now it should see it should show me only the data which is fulfilling this condition Do you see anything which was under 2000? No. If you want to go and change the condition, you are just inactive. You deactivate this condition, then you will see everything. Once you make this inactive, you see all the, all the rows back. Now I want to filter, I want to see only James data. I don't want to see other data, okay? And with the condition. So let me let me trigger the condition first. If, if it is over 2000, it should show only these two, not the five and these, okay? So let me trigger the condition first. I want to make this condition active again. And I also want to see only James data. I don't want to see anyone else details in my query. So I click on the filter. Okay, adapt filters, go.
okay uh, what should i filter what is it customer name right customer name should be james where is customer name okay okay i want to see customer name i want to create a filter only on customer name and which one i want to see only james so now what would happen is it would it would create a filter and restrict all other values and display only james data along with that there is another condition as well it will show only those values because it says that the condition is it has to display only those values which are greater than 2000 so basically it will it will restrict one of the james record and it should show only two records now see only two records now there is something result 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 so many times the result is coming this is very very what you know this is very very uh, confusing and it is uh, uh, annoying so you don't want to display the result set you can simply you know remove from layout group properties Okay, we'll go back and do that. Okay, so the same thing. Now, if you see the layout, this is how it is. Okay. You can also give a comment as well. In the, in the, this was not there before. This is there only in the BW for HANA version. Previous version, we didn't have this commenting queries in the DEX. Now we can create it. Say this is personal comment. You can create a new comment and say that uh, I can write some sort of comment as well if you want. Oh, I did not reply. It. And reply. See your your date when you commented, who commented, the username. Everything is available here. If you want to delete your comment, you can delete as well. If you want to keep comment, you can keep it. So commentary is required uh, in certain reports to communicate between one user to another user. It's a very good feature. Okay. Now we have seen this. We have seen this. We'll go back. We'll go back to the query design mode. I don't want to see this result all the time. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. It should show me here as well. No, it took completely off. I want the product name. Add to rows. And what I want is properties of this one. Display. Uh, yes, yeah, oh, I think uh, just check the last option. No, it's not this. No, no, I was just suppressing the result. Right? Sorry? You are looking to suppress the result, right? Yes, I was. So, so see, from the query designer mode, we can do that. But I want to do yes, it on the yes. runtime. Yeah. I, I'm looking at the runtime option. It is not allowing me to do it at a runtime. Mm -hmm. Suppress yeah, the result, yeah. which is very strange. OK? It should allow me to suppress it here, but it doesn't mm -hmm. allow me to do that. Very strange. Exactly. So what I have to do now is 
I need to go back again, back to the query designer screen and to suppress it, I need to select it here. All the, all of them I can select it together. I can do it one by one or I can select all the, uh, sorry, all of them. And here at the very bottom, you have it, okay? Again, this is very confusing. You need to have maximize the screen to see the objects clearly. Okay. Yeah, there's so many options now, which is why. And then, yes. So I have selected all the, I have selected all the columns, oh, sorry, all the, all the fields. And to change and suppress it, you have here show result rows. Instead of always, I just want to say never. Okay. And then save it. Now, what would happen is once I do that, it would, um, the result would, results would disappear from the, from the screen. Now, another thing I want to tell uh, to James and Ken is that, see, in the initial screen, it is showing me so many fields. I don't want to see, it is too, too much to see. Usually what we do is, the best practice is to mini, uh, display very minimal content in the initial screen and put all the other fields in the free characteristic. In this way, the query performance will improve. Reason being that you are not reading the entire data from the database in one go. If assume that certain queries have like say 40 fields or 50 fields, 60 fields, you don't have to show all the content in one go in the query initial screen. What we do is we just bring the data into the free character, which means that these are available, but on need basis. In the initial screen, what the user would see is only those fields which are there in rows and columns. But anything which is available in the free character means that it is there in your layout. You can drill down any time from there, okay? So you save the query. Now in my query, I only have four fields again, and these four fields uh, should appear in my initial screen. I go here, click on the reporting preview. Let's, let's see you, uh, BW cockpit only. It's much better than reporting preview. And, and then we expand this to full screen. It is easier to see the full screen. Okay. Can you see here, there is no result rows anymore. Now the additional fields, which I said, if you want to see it, you can simply drag and drop from the layout screen. Where is the layout? Here's the layout. And say you want customer name as well again to reappear and say add to rows. And once you have it, then you switch it up, move up. So then the customer name would come before product once you move it up. Okay. Then assume that you also want the customer address. Again, you can add it. And and then if you go to data, you can see that your data is displaying this one. Now, whatever we did changes is only at the runtime. It it won't it won't be there because we added in the initial screen, we have only two fields, but now we added two more fields, address and name, okay? This will go as soon as you close this. You go back to query designer, it goes. So this, this would be applicable only at the runtime. You got my point? And then if you want to download this, you can download this as well into okay good we had uh, zero suppression okay we can save this as a tile as well Okay, good. So in my home of my of my what you know BW query, I have this query as a tile as well. I have saved it. I go to my home screen, and I should be able to see my screen as well. Okay. 
See, the query name is customer five query. Same, same query is save now. I can see it. Go to the layout. You can change the layout, do whatever you want. So these are the few of the basic things which uh, I want to teach you about uh, query designer. There are lots of options. You can do it yourself, play with it. I would uh, suggest you to try there's something called as exceptions and variables and restricted key figure and calculated key figures. Four things I want to give you as a homework. If you can't do it in next two weeks, then remind me, I will teach you how to do these things. So as a homework, just note it down. I want you to practice. Once you get access, practice exceptions. Um, apart from whatever I have shown today, you practice these four things, exceptions, variables, how to create exceptions, how to create variables, then RKF, restricted key figure, and calculated key figures. Maybe, maybe James, uh, if you struggle, maybe next week, uh, I want Rohit to practice this on his own and, and he can walk you through uh, on these four options. But I don't want you to just simply go and ask him. Uh, prior to that, I want you to practice, try for this as a homework, go to, because the way only way we learn on the projects is that you don't learn everything on, in the class. You have to Google it, do it on your own, lots of things. Even till today, uh, we Google a lot to, to look for information, to look for uh, you know new features and bugs, bug fixes and so many things. Yeah, you, you yeah. know, what was that? What are you saying I can, uh, I didn't hear the last one that you said. So what I'm saying is as an assignment homework, I want you to practice these four features of query designer, okay? These are the four features which are available in the tool. I want you okay. to practice this. Um, and, and then you should learn how to create it on your own. If you can't learn how to create, or if you're facing difficulty in creating these objects in using the query designer, then ask me, or maybe uh, I want you to wait for a week till then not, not tomorrow or Saturday, but the following week, um, is next Friday, if you have a class okay. before next Friday, practice these four things. Okay. 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 Along with this, you also need to create the modeling and other stuff. So you have to do an end to end flow. Once you do that, you will get a complete picture of, uh, uh, you know, uh, BW from right from source to target. So now I think you have got enough yeah. in your plate to practice. Yeah. And it is to you as well, uh, Rohit, for you, it should be a piece of cake because you have been doing this a lot. So I want you to practice this before next Friday. And if you come across any issue or challenges, let me know. I will, uh, I will teach you all. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. just this access uh, thing, you know, is sorted. I'm just hoping that uh, max to max till Monday next week, uh, it would get sorted out. So yeah, let's just hope. Yes. Well, so I can just correct. Yeah. So, so please, uh, as I said, you know, we we would be maybe uh, closing this session in next two three weeks. I don't know, depending on the way uh, or pace we take. Uh, so what I suggest is now it's the high time. You don't delay uh, any of the practical exercises. Try to create it. See, I, I have seen that. I'm glad that uh, Mamta is doing it. Uh, I'll just show you my screen. She has created her own info area. And uh, and if you see here, she she has already uh, sorry uh, Rupa has already started creating objects. Not on the on the, from the previous batch. I go to Project Explorer. I see her own um, info area as well. Rupa's info area. See. Uh, yeah. So mine, you said I don't I don't have to create a new one, right? I can just use yeah. You don't have to create anything, one. James. You just create under your info area. All your objects you started you start creating under this. Or if okay. you want to create another one, you create another one, James too. Under nah, this, I I think it will be a duplicate. I mean, doing uh, yeah. I I can try to do it on my own, but since it's already there, uh, can you delete it once you're done? Can you delete it? Yeah, you can delete your objects. If you want, you create another object, but don't delete this one because we want to perform some exercises on this this info okay. area. So <laughs> if you want to, delete, yeah, if you want to create create another one, uh, James two. Yeah, I just James to have one. a few, uh -huh, and then I'll delete. Correct, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So you can create as many as you like. Like James Bond movie, you can create twenty twenty five whatever has released so far. Okay. Okay. Uh, so so create create the object whatever you like and uh, don't delete my objects till till the okay. session is over. Maybe once we close the session. All right. Uh huh. We can do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, James. You can uh, if you have just deleted uh, Ian's object, then we can also again see the new exercise. You know, he would be creating again for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so with mine, are you? Are, uh, what's going to happen? I will talk to. Uh, I will talk to the uh, you. See, uh, did, I don't know. To be honest with you, regarding your uh, fee arrangement and stuff, I don't know what was agreed. But if they agreed to give you the system access as part of the course, yeah. then they yeah, have to. I, I, I registered it with James, so he was okay. supposed to be the same thing. So, so they should, they should, they should able to give. Uh, they should give you. If not, um, Ken, I am going to talk to uh, the owner of uh, Zarantech tomorrow, and bring up these issues with access. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll keep you posted tomorrow uh, on the outcome of my discussion with him. Uh, okay. Yeah, please yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, please, please go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll just go to Turk and uh, probably issue um, issue uh, what do you call it ticket uh, for for them just to follow up and see what. I what I already happening. issued a ticket. That's when that's when they sent me that message. And then yeah, and then if so, probably can follow up with another call. Another call just to see what, what because I feel like um it, it's not only one person who's working on, 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 on it at, at a point in time. So maybe communication gap is over there. So just try uh, pushing for it. Okay, folks. Uh, I will definitely bring this up tomorrow and uh, keep you posted on the discussion uh, outcome. Okay. We will meet again tomorrow at the same time, uh, regular class. So right. we will try right. to learn about uh, native HANA modeling techniques tomorrow. Again, it's uh, different to BW. I don't want to confuse you too much, but uh, we will try to cover at least basics of uh, creating the calculation views and stuff tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Again, uh, just one thing. Uh, please, you know, uh, check uh, with them and just tell them, you know, to provide me an official confirmation of that, you know, revision date, that 27th of September, please. Because you know I haven't received it, uh, I uh, and uh, I fear that you know by the time I would be getting my uh, uh, remote desktop issue solved from my IT team, uh, you know the one month access would have already been expired. You know, it's, it's I understand. It's I understand. 12, 12. Sure, sure. Yeah. So this guy has given me verbal confirmation. I'll ask him to uh, give in writing. No problem. I'll yeah, to please, talk to him please. And, and That would be yeah. great. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No issues. Yeah, uh, he is reasonable. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you don't have to worry much about this. Definitely, it would take up to 27th of this month uh, for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah, you're you. welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. See you guys. See you tomorrow. Then. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our Vimeo page and follow for more upcoming videos.